Now, when we do a principal component analysis, one of the primary things we're doing is trying to identify the true dimensionality of a data set. When a majority of the variability uh, exists in a number of dimensions that is smaller than the dimension of the data set itself, then it is going to be appropriate uh, and helpful to be able to reduce the dimensionality of uh, the problem that we're working with by focusing on a, a small number uh, of uh, principal components computed from the data. These principal components are computed from the original variables via linear transformations, linear combinations of those original variables. Now, in many, many situations, it's going to be very helpful and advantageous if we can uh, interpret what these principal components are measuring. But you'll remember from our previous discussions about principal component analysis, that interpretability of the principal components is not guaranteed uh, by, by the procedure. Um, but in some cases, they are interpretable. And when that's the case, then that's going to be an added bonus to the principal component analysis. And so let's think about how we can uh, uh, try to interpret uh, or attach meaning to uh, what the principal components are measuring. So in order to in, uh, interpret and assess the importance of the principal components, it is helpful to look at the nature and the extent of the relationships between the principal components and the original variables. In particular, we can consider the covariance and the correlation between the principal components and the original variables. Now remember that uh, the covariance and the correlation uh, give us a way to measure the strength of the linear relationship uh, between two variables. And the correlation uh, has the advantage over the covariance in that uh, it, its value does not depend on the unit of measure. And so ultimately what we're going to be after here is uh, trying to determine or come up with formulas, come up with expressions for uh, the uh, correlation between a given principal component and a given uh, original variable. And if we can do that, then we can calculate the value of that correlation in a given situation, a given data set, and we can begin to uh, try to interpret uh, or attach meaning to uh, the principal component. Now recall that the kth principal component of a random vector that has a uh, corresponding covariance matrix, uh, cap sig, associated with it, uh, that kth principal component which we're uh, denoting by y sub k in these notes, is given uh, by this linear combination of the original variables x1 to xp. And the coefficients that we're uh, multiplying against the original variables are the values uh, or the uh, coefficients in uh, c sub k, uh, which is the uh, p by 1 uh, vector. It's the like one characteristic vector of the covariance matrix cap sig corresponding to its kth largest characteristic group, uh, lambda sub k. Now, so this is a typo, my view, and so you want to change this in your notes. This should be uh, lambda sub k. So it's the kth largest characteristic group um, of cap sig. And so again, the coefficients uh, that define this, uh, this linear combination of the original variables that gives us uh, the value of uh, the k uh, principal component, those coefficients come from c sub k, which is again the length one characteristic vector of cap sig corresponding to the k largest characteristic group, lambda sub k. Now, if you think back to our overview, uh, <clears throat> a very quick overview of uh, distribution theory, one of the topics in that overview. Uh, was the uh, properties of covariance. And we can uh, utilize uh, those properties now to help us uh, come up with, uh, derive a formula, an expression for the covariance between y sub k and x sub j. Again, y sub k is the kth principal component, and x sub j is the jth original variable. 
And so using those properties, uh, the covariance between the kth principal component and the jth original variable is uh, given by this linear combination of the uh, entries in the, uh, let's see, these would be the uh, entries in the j column of the covariance matrix of the uh, underlying distribution. So these, uh, these sigmas are the uh, entries in the j column of cap sig, right, uh, of this uh, covariance matrix here. And so <clears throat> you would see here that the, uh, the coefficients, um, C1K, C2K, and so forth, up to C sub PK. Uh, these are the uh, coefficients uh, in C sub K. So this is a this is a very nice uh, and very useful uh, formula uh, for obtaining the covariance between the kth principal component and the jth original variable. Now it turns out that there is an even easier formula for the covariance between the uh, J original variable and the K principal component, and it's given by uh, this formula here. All right. So instead of having to compute uh, a sum of uh, P products here, all we have to do is compute a single product, and this uh, is the uh, K largest characteristic group of cap sig. Uh, that's what lambda sub K is, and C sub, uh, sub J K. This is the J entry in the uh, vector uh, C sub K. And so there we've got two ways of computing the covariance uh, between the J print, I'm sorry, the K principal component and the J original variable. We've got this formula here, and then we also have uh, this uh, even uh, more succinct formula here. And so uh, you will get the same value uh, using either formula. Now, recall that the correlation between two random variables is equal to their covariance divided by the square root of the product of their variances. And so we have uh, determined um, formulas for the uh, covariance between y sub k and x sub j. We've got these two formulas that we just looked at. So we have uh, expressions for the numerator for this correlation, the correlation between the kth principal component and the jth original variable. And so uh, utilizing uh, this more uh, <clears throat> brief uh, formula uh, in the numerator, uh, <clears throat> we have C sub JK times lambda sub K. And then uh, we, to get the correlation, we divide that by the square root of the product of the variances of Y sub K and X sub J, respectively. And you'll recall that the variance of the K principal component is just the K largest characteristic root of uh, cap sig. And uh, the variance of x sub j is the uh, uh, diagonal of the covariance, uh, the, uh, covariance matrix cap sig, uh, sigma sub j j. So this is the j uh, diagonal element in uh, the covariance matrix cap sig. And so we can, uh, we now have a formula for the correlation between the k principal component and the j original variable. And uh, we can calculate it. Uh, using either of these formulas down here, uh, we can do a little bit of algebra and uh, simplify this somewhat. And so either of these formulas is fine. Uh, we can use either one to uh, calculate the, cor uh, the correlation uh, between the k principal component and the j principal variable. And so now we, we have a way to uh, <clears throat> try, at least, to come up with an interpretation uh, of the k principal component. And we would do this by... Uh, calculating the correlation uh, between the kth principal component and each of the original uh, variables x1, x2, and so forth, up to x sub p. And then by evaluating uh, the uh, magnitudes and the sign of those uh, correlations, <clears throat> then we may be able to come up with an interpretation of what this uh, principal component, y sub k, is, uh, is measuring. And we would want to do that for each of the principal components that we uh, have decided to use based on, for example, a screen plot or based on uh, a proportion of the total variability uh, accounted for by that subset of the principal components. So this is a way that we can, uh, again, try to uh, interpret what the principal components are measuring.
So again, this formula here, uh, which is the product of the square root of the kth largest uh, characteristic root of cap sig and the jth entry for the corresponding length and characteristic vector uh, c sub k divided by the square root of the variance of the jth original variable x sub j. So again, you can use either of these two formulas, uh, but then you'll get the same answer regardless, obviously. So let's look at some examples. Uh, <clears throat> right now, we're going to look at how to uh, calculate the correlations. And then, uh, be, but because there's no context to these uh, uh, examples that we're going to be looking at here, uh, we're not going to be able to really try to interpret uh, these principal components uh, in other than anything but a, a very general way. Um, in a particular uh, example with a particular data set that has a context, uh, we, uh, you know, we, that's uh, the kind of situation that we will try to interpret what the principal components are measuring. And so this is example six. And so let uh, x be a two by one uh, random vector following a multivariate normal distribution with covariance matrix uh, given by this two by two matrix with entries four and one uh, in the first row and then one and four in the second row. And uh, so again, uh, uh, this uh, Entry in the upper left, the 4, that's the variance of x1. Uh, the 4 down here, this is the variance of x2. And then the covariance between x1 and x2 is 1. Denote the vector of uh, principal components by uh, bold y, which is the 2 by 1 vector y1 and y2. And then for each k going from 1 to 2 and j going from 1 to 2, uh, so for each principal component, and for each original variable, determine covariance between uh, the principal component and the original variable. And then once we have that, compute the correlation. And so we found in a previous example that the characteristic roots of this covariance matrix are lambda 1 equal to 5 and lambda 2 equal to 3. And we found length 1 characteristic uh, vectors corresponding to these characteristic roots C1 being the 2 by 1 uh, vector containing the values 0.71 and 0.71. And C2 is the 2 by 1 vector uh, containing the uh, entries 0.71 and negative 0.71. And so we have those two formulas for calculating the covariance. Uh, and so we're going to use both of those just to demonstrate that we, how to use them and that we do get the same values. And so using the first covariance formula uh, to get the covariance between the kth principal component and the jth original variable, which again is given by this expression, uh, we get the following. So the covariance between the first principal component, y1, and the first original variable, x1, is given by c11 times sigma11 plus uh, c21 times sigma21. And so we have these values. And that turns out to be 3.55. The covariance between the first principal component y1 and the second original variable, x2, is c11 times sigma12 plus c21 times sigma22. And that also is equal to 3.55. The covariance between the second principal component, y2, and the first original variable, x1, is C time, uh, C12 times sigma11 plus C22 times sigma21. And that turns out to be 2.13. And then the covariance between the second principal component and the first original variable is equal to C12 times sigma12 plus C22 times sigma22. And that turns out to be negative 2.13. Now, we can also get these covariances using uh, the more uh, abbreviated formula, the more succinct formula, lambda sub k times c sub j k. And <clears throat> so using that formula, the covariance between the first principal component and the first original variable is lambda 1 times c11. All right, so that's 5 times 0.71 or 3.55. Uh, Covariance between y1, the first principal component, and the second original variable, x2, is lambda 1 times c21, 5 times 0.71, so again 
the covariance between y2 and x1, the second uh, principal component from the first original variable, is lambda 2 times c12, 3 times 0.71, or 2.13. And the covariance between the second principal component and the second original variable is lambda 2 times c22, 3 times negative 0.71, or negative 2.3. And so you see that these are the same results that we got on the previous slide. So you can use either of these two formulas okay, to get the, the covariance. Um, and so once we have the covariance, then we can calculate the correlation, uh, the correlations between uh, the two principal components and each of the uh, original variables. And so the correlation between the first principal component and the first original variable is equal to the covariance divided by the square root of the product of the variances of uh, y1 of x1, and that turns out to be 0.794. The correlation between the first principal component and the second original variable is also 0.794. The correlation between y2, the second principal component, and the first original variable is uh, using this formula, 0.615. And the correlation between the second principal component and the second original variable, again using this formula, is negative 0.615. And so here we see that um, in looking in, for example, if we try to uh, interpret y1 based on these correlations, we see here that the first principal component, y1, uh, is fairly strongly correlated with um, each of the two uh, underlying uh, original variables, x1 and x2. And so we can really think of y1 as being kind of a, 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 a mean, uh, an average value, um, in, a, in a way, of, the, uh, of those two variables. And we would note that because these correlations are positive, both of these are positive, then uh, as uh, x1 increases, uh, y1 uh, would tend to increase as well. And if x2 increases, then y1 tends to increase as well. So y1, the first principal component, uh, tends to increase, tends to be larger when uh, x1 and x2 are larger, and the smaller that x1 and x2 are, the smaller the first principal component uh, would tend to be as well. And so uh, we can, that's one way that we can uh, make a general statement about how we could try to interpret the first principal component y1. Uh, now, in the absence of any other kind of uh, context, uh, that's about as far as we can go with uh, the interpretation. But that's very useful, and you know, in, in a real-world problem where x1 and x2 uh, have specific meanings and you know specific uh, units and things like that, then um, you know we could even perhaps go further in trying to interpret what uh, the first principal component is measuring. Now, uh, next, if we try to interpret y2, we'll notice that uh, the correlation of y2 with x1 is uh, moderate to strong. Uh, it's a moderate to strong positive correlation. And uh, the uh, correlation between the second principal component y2 and the second original variable x2 is uh, a negative correlation uh, with the same magnitude, so a moderate to strong correlation there. Now, because the coefficient on, or the, I'm sorry, because the correlation between y2 and x1 is positive, and the correlation between uh, y2 and x2 is negative, um, what this would mean is that for a fixed value of x1, I'm sorry, for a fixed value of x2, uh, as x1 increases, y1 tends to increase, um, on the other hand, if uh, x1 is held constant, then if x2 is, uh, is uh, increased, then y2 would tend to decrease because of this negative correlation. Uh, in the same way, if we decrease x1, then y2 would tend, to be, uh, would tend to decrease or get smaller. On the other hand, if we decrease x2, then y2 would tend to increase, again, because we've got this negative correlation. And so we can use that to... Uh, help us try to interpret what y2 is measuring. And the other thing I would point out is that because these have a different sign, um, 
uh, we can think of y2 as being a comparison of uh, x1 and x2. And so that can be, uh, that's a very useful way to think about uh, what y2 is measuring as well. Um, it's really a uh, really kind of comparison of those uh, two variables, or the values of the two variables. Now let's look at the next example. Again, we have a 2 by 1 random vector following a multivariate normal distribution with a covariance matrix given by uh, this 2 by 2 matrix here. So the variance of x1 is 4, the variance of x2 is 2, the covariance of x1 and x2 is 1. Again, we will denote the vector principal components by bold y, a 2 by 1 vector containing the two principal components, y1 and y2. For each k from uh, 1 to 2 and each j 1 to 2, we want to determine the covariance of y sub k and x sub j, and then also the correlation between y sub k and x sub j. In other words, for each of the two principal components, we want to uh, calculate uh, or come up with expressions, uh, or actually values, uh, for the covariance between the k principal component and the j for original variable, as well as the correlation. And then we can again try to attach at least some general interpretation of what the two principal components are measuring. And so uh, we saw this uh, particular uh, distribution uh, in a previous example. And uh, the characteristic groups of this covariance matrix are lambda 1 equal to 4.41 and lambda 2 equal to 1.59. Now, the length one characteristic vector of cap sig corresponding to lambda 1 is the 2 by 1 vector containing the entries 0.92 and 0.38. Uh, similarly, the uh, <coughs> length 1 characteristic vector of cap sig corresponding to the characteristic group 1.59 is this 2 by 1 vector containing the entries negative 0.38 and positive 0.92. And so we can use the first covariance formula to calculate the uh, covariances. All right, and so the covariance between uh, y1, the first principal component, and the first original variable is c11 times sigma11 plus c21 times sigma21. All right, and those entries, those values are given on the previous two uh, slides. And that turns out to be 4.06. The covariance between the first principal component and the second uh, original variable is given by the formula C11 times sigma12 plus C21 times sigma23. And so plugging values in, we get 1.68. The covariance between uh, the second principal component and the first original variable is uh, sigma12 times I'm sorry, C12 times sigma11 plus C22 times sigma21. And that turns out to be negative 0.6. And then finally, the covariance between the second principal component and the second original variable is equal to C12 times sigma12 plus C22 times sigma22. And that turns out to be 1.6. Now, we can also use the uh, simpler formula, the more uh, succinct formula, to calculate the covariances. And so, using that formula, the covariance between the first principal component and the first original variable is given by lambda 1 for the largest characteristic root of cap sig times C11, 4.41 times 0 0.92, which is 4.06. The covariance between y1, the first principal component, and the second original variable is lambda 1 times c21. That turns out to be 1.68. The covariance between y2, the second principal component, and the first original variable, lambda 2 times c12. That is equal to negative 0.6. And then the covariance between the second principal component, y2, and the second original variable, x2, is lambda 2 times C22, uh, which is 1.46. And so again, you'll see that these are the same values that we got on the previous slide using uh, the, uh, the other formula. 
right? Each one is uh, fine to use. Once we have the covariances, we can calculate the correlations. We divide the, uh, the covariances by uh, the square root and the product of the uh, appropriate variances. And so it turns out that um, the correlation between the first principal component and the first original variable is 0.97. The correlation between the first principal component and the second original variable is 0.57. The correlation between the second principal component and the first original variable is negative 0.24. And the correlation uh, between the second principal component and the second original variable is 0.2. And so based on these correlations, if we focus on uh, the correlations between between y1 and each of the two original variables, uh, we see that y1, the first principal component, is very highly positively correlated with uh, the first original variable, x1. And it is uh, moderately uh, correlated with the second original variable, x2. Again, uh, y1 is, uh, in a way, a, kind of an average of x1 and x2, but it's uh, uh, more closely related, the more heavily influenced, let's say, um, by uh, X1 because of that positive, uh, that very large uh, correlation. Uh, <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, <clears throat> in trying to interpret Y2, uh, because the signs of these two correlations are different, we can again uh, think of Y2 as providing a, a comparison of <clears throat> uh, x1 and x2, and uh, <clears throat> its value would appear to be more heavily uh, related, more closely related, to uh, the value from x2. But we still can think of it as a, a comparison of those two values. Now, for what values of x1 and x2 would why uh, y2 uh, tend to be large? Well, if x2, uh, based on these correlations, if x2 is large and if x1 is small, small values of x1 uh, and large values of x2 would correspond to larger values of y2. Uh, on the other hand, larger values of x1 and smaller values of x2 would lead to small values of y2. Now, in thinking in, in along those same lines for uh, y1, what values of x1 and x2 would tend to make y1 large, and what values of x1 and x2 would tend to make y1 small? Well, because these are both positively correlated, or positive, I'm sorry, these are both positive correlations, uh, in other words, y1 is positively correlated with x1 and x2, then large values of x1 and x2 would uh, tend to correspond to larger values of, of y1. And smaller values of x1 and x2 would uh, tend to lead to smaller values of y1. And so <clears throat> this is the kind of thinking that we want to uh, use when we're trying to interpret uh, what the principal components are measuring. Uh, what values of the underlying uh, variables would tend to make a principal component uh, small? what values of the original variables would tend to make the principal component uh, larger. And so if we can uh, determine that, and it should be fairly straightforward once we have these correlations, then you can begin to uh, uh, attach some meaning uh, to uh, what the principal components are measuring. Okay, let's look at the next example, example 8. So in this case, x is a 3 by 1 random vector. Uh, the uh, covariance matrix is this 3 by 3 matrix here. And uh, so you can see those values. Let's, uh, and so in this case, because we have a three-dimensional response variable, uh, we're going to have three principal components uh, associated with this distribution, y1, y2, and y3. And so again, we want to compute the covariance, uh, the covariances and the correlations uh, between the uh, principal component, each of the principal components, and each of the original variables. <clears throat>
And so <clears throat> in this uh, situation, uh, the three uh, characteristic roots of the covariance matrix are 6.73, 3.27, and 2.00. And <clears throat> the uh, length one characteristic vectors of the covariance matrix corresponding to those three uh, characteristic roots are C1, C2, and C3. C1 having entries 0 0.63, 0 0.46, and 0 0.63. Uh, notice that those are all positive. Um, <clears throat> and then C2 contains the entries negative 0.33, positive 0.89, and negative 0.33. Okay, and then finally C3 has the entries uh, 0.7, positive 0.71, 0, and negative 0.71. All right, and so you remember how you would calculate uh, the, <clears throat> the principal components from uh, the original variables. These would be the coefficients for uh, multiplying against x1, x2, and x3 respectively to get y1. These would be the coefficients that we would multiply against x1, x2, and x3 to get uh, y2, the second principal component, and then the coefficients that would be uh, multiplied against the original variables x1, x2, and x3 to get y3, the third principal component, would be uh, these coefficients here. And so you can see here that in this, uh, with this set of coefficients, uh, y3 uh, involves uh, x1 and x3, but not x2. Now, using the first covariance formula for the covariance between uh, the kth principal component and the jth original variable, uh, we get a covariance of 4.24 uh, uh, for the covariance between the first principal component and the first original variable. The covariance between the first principal component and the second original variable is 3.10, and the covariance between the first principal component and the third original variable is 4.24. The covariance between the second principal component and the first original variable is negative 1.09. The co uh, covariance between the second principal component and the second original variable is positive 2.90. And the covariance between the second principal component and the third original variable is negative 1.09. And then finally, the covariance between the third principal component and x1, the first original variable, is 1.42. The covariance between the third principal component, y3, and the second uh, measured variable, x2, is 0. And the third principal component, uh, I'm sorry, the covariance between the third principal component and the third original variable uh, is uh, negative 1.42. Now, using the second covariance formula, uh, we get the same values. Uh, we get values uh, 4.24 for the covariance between y1 and the first original variable. The covariance between y1 and x2 is 3.10. And the covariance between y1 and x3 is 4.24. All right, and so we get the covariances uh, between y2 and each of the three original variables given here, negative 1.08, 2.91, and negative 1.08. And then finally, the covariances between y3 and each of the original variables uh, listed here, uh, 1.42, 0, and negative 1.42. And so these are the same values that we got using the first covariance formula, with the exception of uh, some very slight rounding errors. Uh, but we see that uh, they're both uh, representing the same quantity. Once we have those covariances, we can calculate the correlations. And so we see here that uh, the correlation uh, between y1 and each of the three, three uh, original measured variables, x1, x2, and x3, are given here, 0 0.8q, 0 0.6, and 0.8q, respectively. And so we see here that y1 is uh, positively correlated and uh, fairly strongly correlated with each of the original measured variables x1, x2, and x3. Now, uh, in trying to interpret y1 and what y1 is measuring, uh, we would take these correlations into account, uh, not only the magnitude but also the signs. 
And uh, so we could think of y1 as being an over, uh, a measure uh, of the overall, uh, uh, well, let, let me say this. We can think of it as, uh, for example, an average, uh, a type of average of the uh, original variables x1, x2, and x3. Now, if we had more information on what x1 and x2 and x3 were measuring, then we could provide more uh, of an interpretation, perhaps. But this is uh, uh, thinking of, of y1 as a kind of mean, a weighted mean, uh, of the values, uh, or a weighted sum, actually, there's a better term, a weighted sum of x1, x2, and x3, is useful. We also want to ask the question, uh, for what values of x1, x2, and x3 would y1 tend to be large? And for what the values of x1, x2, and x3 would y1 tend to be small? And because uh, y1 is positively correlated with uh, each of these three uh, variables, then when these variables tend to be larger, uh, then uh, y1 would tend to be larger as well. When x1, x2, and x3 are small, then y1 would uh, also tend to be smaller. And so we uh, see here, uh, this gives us more information about how we could interpret uh, y1. Next, the correlation. The correlations between the second principal component, y2, and each of the original variables, x1, x, x2, and x3, are negative 0.3, positive 0.8, and negative point, this should be negative 0.3, there's a little typo there, negative 0.3, respectively. And so, uh, again, we ask the question, for what values of the original variables, x1, x2, and x3, would y1 tend to be large? And what values of x1, x2, and x3 would cause x, uh, I'm sorry, y2 to, uh, to tend to be small? And so based on these correlations, uh, we would see, we would say, that, and we can, we can conclude that uh, if <clears throat> for large values of x2 and small values of x1 and x3, uh, y2 tends to be larger. For smaller values of uh, x2 and larger values of x1 and x3, then um, y2 tends to be smaller. And so we could uh, use that as a way to try to interpret uh, what y2 is measuring. And in a way, y2 is measuring uh, or, or quantifying a comparison between x2 and the uh, uh, average, let's say, of x1 and x3. And then finally, uh, the correlations between y3 and each of three variables, x1, x2, and x3. Uh, the correlation between y3 and x1 is 0.5. Uh, the correlation between y3 and x2 is 0. Right? And then, <coughs> excuse me, and then the correlation between y3 and x3 is negative 0.5. And so we see here that for the large values of x1 and small values of x3, uh, y3 tends to be larger. For small values of x1 and large values of x3, y3 tends to be smaller. Uh, y3 is not uh, related, linear related, to x2. And so we, and also y3 looks to be a uh, comparison of uh, x1 and x3. Okay, moving on to example nine. Uh, we all, again, in this example, have a three by one random vector uh, containing the uh, Random variables x1, x2, and x3. Uh, <clears throat> the, random, uh, the distribution for this random vector has a covariance matrix, a 3 by 3 covariance matrix given by this uh, matrix here. And so again, we want to determine the covariances and the correlations between each of the principal components and each of the original variables. And so we'll uh, do this by looking at the characteristic roots and the characteristic vectors and then uh, using the formulas appropriately. And so the characteristic roots of cap sig for this example are uh, lambda 1 equal to 7.37, lambda 2 equal to 3.00, and lambda 3 equal to 1.63, with corresponding length 1 characteristic vectors uh, C1, C2, and C3 as listed here. All right. And then we can calculate the Covariances uh, <clears throat> between each of the principal components and each of the uh, original variables using either of the two formulas. And again, we've got the 
I'm using the first covariance formula and then uh, following up with the uh, second covariance formula just to show that we get the same values. And so the covariance between y1 uh, and each of x1, x2, and x3 are given here, 3.98, 4.72, and 3.98, respectively. The covariance between the second principal component and each of the original measured variables, x1, x2, and x3, are 2.130 0 and negative 2.13. And then finally, the uh, covariances between y3, uh, third principal component, and each of the original uh, measured variables, x1, x2, and x3, are 0.71, negative 0.128, and positive 0.71. Using the second covariance formula, uh, we get covariances between y1 and each of the original uh, variables, x1, x2, and x3, of 3.98, 4.72, and 3.98. Covariances between y2 and each of the three original variables, of 2.13, 0, and negative 2.13. And then finally, covariances between the third principal component, y3, and each of the original variables x1, x2, and x3 of 0.73, negative 0.126, uh, I'm sorry, uh, negative 1.26, and then positive 0.73. And again, these are the same with, uh, with the exception of uh, slight rounding errors that we got using the first covariance formula. Once we have the covariances, we can calculate the correlations. And so the correlation between uh, y1 and x1 is 0.73. The correlation between y1 and x2 is 0.87. And the third, uh, the correlation between y1 and x3 uh, is 0.73. And so again, y1 is uh, positively and strongly positively correlated with each of the three original variables, x1, x2, and x3. As the original variables uh, get larger, y1 tends to get larger. As the <clears throat> three original variables tend to get smaller, uh, the first principal component, y1, tends to get smaller. And we can also think of y1 as uh, a linear, uh, it's a, you know, it is a linear combination. It's a linear uh, a weighted average or a weighted sum of the, uh, <clears throat> of the original variables, uh, <clears throat> the coefficients being positive. And so in a way, we can think of this y1 as being kind of an average uh, of the uh, of the three variables. <clears throat> the correlation between y2 and x1 is positive 0.61. The correlation between y2 and x2 is 0. And the correlation between y2 and x3 is negative 0.61. And so as x1 <clears throat> gets larger <clears throat> and as x3, x3 gets smaller, then uh, y2 would tend to get larger. Uh, on the other hand, as x1 gets smaller and um, x2, I'm sorry, x3 gets larger, then y2 would tend to be uh, smaller. <clears throat> and then finally, the correlation between y3 and, well, let me back up a second. Let me say one more thing about uh, uh, these correlations, their signs, and how we can use that to interpret y2. Uh, because uh, the... Uh, Correlation between y2 and x1 is positive, and the correlation between y2 and x3 is negative. Then we can think of y2 as providing a comparison of, of the measurements x1 and x3. And then finally, the correlation between y3 and x1 is 0.29. The correlation between y3 and x2 is negative 0.49. And the correlation between y3 and x3 is 0.29. And so you can see here that as x1 and as x as x1 and x3 get larger and x2 gets smaller, then y3 would tend to get larger. As x1 and x3 get smaller and x2 tends to get, and as x2 gets larger, then uh, y3 would tend to get smaller. <clears throat> and we can also think of y3 as providing a comparison of uh, the, the uh, average of x1 and x3 and x2.
So we have one more example, example 10, but I'm going to leave this for you to go through and uh, uh, interpret, uh, try to attach an interpretation, uh, you know, a very general uh, uh, interpretation to each of the uh, principal components uh, by calculating, make sure you can calculate uh, these covariances and correlations. In fact, you know, go through all these examples by hand, you know, make sure that you, know, you can you know, calculate these values, calculate the uh, covariances and the correlations using both the first and the second covariance formulas. So again, make sure that you can do those calculations and then as, as we go forward, we will continue to uh, uh, think about how to interpret um, these uh, principal components by looking at these correlations. And uh, one nice thing about uh, SAS and, and really any uh, statistical software package that does principal component analysis, but uh, certainly uh, this is true for SAS, that when we use uh, uh, proc print common and uh, you know, to perform a principal component analysis in SAS, uh, it's going to uh, calculate these correlations for us. So we're not going to actually have to do them by hand uh, in the context of an uh, analysis of a real data set. Um, we're going to let the, the software do those calculations for us. But it is helpful to know where those correlations are coming from. So we'll skip to example 11. And uh, this will be the last uh, example that we look at in this particular context. And um, So actually, wait a minute, I, I think I've changed my mind here. I'm going to save this for uh, uh, the next topic because this, this example leads into the next topic. And so what I will do is I will stop this uh, lecture video here and then um, we will pick up with the next lecture video.